So this is my first walk for 20,000 steps in a day. Walking 20,000 steps takes roughly two and a half hours, which is a lot of walking. Watch this. Bam, 20,000 steps today. Can walking solve all your problems? Some people think so. Dan Ko made a video and wrote an article about how 15,000 steps a day changed his life. This is what he said. If you're bored, go on a walk. If you're stressed, go on a walk. If you're uninspired, go on a walk. If you're overweight, go on a walk. Most, if not all of your problems can be relieved, if not solved, by going on a walk. I was feeling bored, I was feeling uninspired, and I felt like I was in a rut after finishing my last video about how I quit social media for seven days. After the challenge was over, I was just back to binging content on YouTube and feeling a bit aimless and not sure what to do for my next video. So I thought, okay, Dan Ko, let's see if you're right. I decided to walk 20,000 steps a day for seven days. And little did I know what I was getting myself into. Today is day one of 20,000 steps. And what did I do during my walk of 20,000 steps? Talking on the phone with my friend Chase for an hour and a half, just having my earphones in. The time flew by really quickly when I was on a call. I found that when you're just on a call with a friend, you can just keep walking forever as long as you're on the call. So that was really easy to get those steps in today. It's hard to say if it was the walking that made me feel good or because I talked to my friends also during the walk and also after the walk that made me feel good. But yeah, it was good to get my steps in while I was on the call with my friend Chase. So wrap for day one, that was a success. Today's day two. I've been walking for almost two hours and I'm at 17,000 steps, so I still need 3,000 more. My feet are hurting, not so badly, but they're a bit sore at the balls of my feet. At the beginning, I did not have any earphones in. Then I put earphones in and started listening to podcasts. It is end of day two. My feet are way more sore than at the end of day one. Hopefully it recovers in time for tomorrow's walk. I almost always wear these barefoot shoes, which are super thin in terms of the sole. And I guess that's why walking is uh, more painful after a long walk overall. What? Today is day three. I was watching TV and YouTube on TV before coming out. And now that I have come out, I do feel better. I just feel like this is a better way to uplift my mood after just being sedentary for a while. This being the third day, I think 20,000 steps is overkill. And I think I already knew that going into this challenge. Not that I'm gonna give up on my 20,000 step challenge, but yeah, the sweet spot is probably less than 20,000 for sure. I'm at 15,000 steps, so I have 5,000 steps more to go, but I was thirsty, I needed some water, and also my feet are getting tired, so I'm gonna rest before doing the rest of the 5,000. Right, Tigger? I really didn't want to come out to finish the last 5,000 steps. Why did I say, why did I say 20,000 fucking steps? Oh my gosh, I should have said 15,000. The article was about 15,000. Today I walked most of the walk without anything in my ears, and then I switched to earbuds at the last few thousand steps and listened to some flute and piano music. I found that even though it was new music, my mind was wandering. Anyway, so it's a different experience from listening to podcasts and words blurring in your ears. It's the end of day three, and last night, my time to fall asleep was less than 15 minutes, which is actually quite rare for me. Usually it takes me definitely longer than 15 minutes, so falling asleep in less than 15 minutes is really good. <laughs> Man, after my nearly three hour walk, even if it's broken into two, I just feel like lying down afterwards. I'm just like, I don't wanna even read. Uh, I guess this is pretty draining to be walking three hours every single day. A little walk is energizing, but a super long walk is definitely draining. I don't feel really tired after 10,000 steps, but 20,000 steps, that's a different story. It's the morning of day four, and even though I went to bed an hour earlier yesterday, my 
time to fall asleep was still less than 20 minutes. So it seems like it is definitely affecting my sleep or at least the ability to fall asleep quickly. Summer is here. It is 27 degrees Celsius, which is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And I noticed that my pace is slowed down. I'm definitely walking slower because it's hotter. I'm breaking my walk up in two again, 12,000 steps in the morning, and gonna finish 8,000 steps right now. People say that walking is great for creative problem solving. There's even a study by Stanford where they show that walking increased their creative problem solving skills. But when I think of idea generation, coming up with new ideas, better ideas, thinking of what to talk about in my next video, or when I'm thinking about asking myself, how do I make my video better? I don't really get any bright ideas. I don't find walking that great for brainstorming or coming up with solutions to, like for example, how to make this video good. So just walking without anything plugged into your ears doesn't seem to be a solution for all things when it comes to coming up with ideas or solving problems. There are no skin peeling or anything like that on either feet. I would give credit to the barefoot shoes that I wear, that I've been wearing for over a year now. This is in contrast to Matt Diavella who had skin peeling off his feet even after just 10,000 steps a day, which is half of what I'm doing right now. We've got these scabs that have started to form. They're pretty small, but scabs nonetheless. You can see it. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, I, I think that this might just give you a little bit of an indicator as to the amount of steps that I typically get on a given day because my feet have clearly never been through something like this before. Did not get enough sleep last night. Went to bed very late. Ugh, I only have 3,000 steps, so I gotta go out. Really don't wanna go out right now. Shit, son, I gotta get moving if I wanna do this challenge. Two things arrived that I got for my walk. One is the sun hat. I know it's not the most fashionable, but it's better protecting my skin against the sun than a cap. And also, I got this step counter fitness band. It's called the Samsung Galaxy Fit 3. It is very convenient to see how close I am to my target so that I can adjust my walking accordingly just to hit just 20,000 and I don't have to walk that much more. Man, my feet are sore even though today is day five. By the end of the walk, it's just, it's not a, it's a miserable walk. Like at the beginning when I'm listening to, I was listening to Dr. K and it was fun listening while walking at the beginning. But then by the end of the walk, I was like, oh my gosh, 20,000 steps is a lot. And the walk becomes miserable. So I'm glad the walking is done for today. It is past 8 p.m. Oh man, I still have two more days of this. Day six, it is 7 p.m. right now and I only have 5,000 steps. So 15,000 more to go and I gotta walk until the sun sets basically. So God damn, I really don't wanna, really don't wanna do it, but I will do it. Let's do this. I do feel a bit better now that I've come out. We'll see if this better feeling lasts for the full 15,000 steps. I listened to an hour long lecture about how to write effectively and I find that listening to long form content is the best while you're walking. I think the sweet spot for walking length is about an hour to an hour and a half and I mean I'm on t two hours right now and it is, it is a grind after an hour and a half, I would say. So yeah, better to have two or three hour long walks or two one and a half hour walks. Anything longer than an hour and a half is just unpleasant. Not as miserable as yesterday, but still <laughs> feet are tired again and unpleasant. I really did walk until the sunset. That's the moon right there. Today is day seven, the last day of 20,000 steps a day. And look who I have joining me. This is Gabby. Hi guys. And she's from Vancouver. She's a YouTuber friend that I met online and meeting in person for the first time. So now there's the second YouTuber friend that I've met in person. So we've reached 20,000 steps and that was the easiest 20,000 steps I've hit in the past seven days. Just <laughs> talking with Gabby the whole time. Totally an easy trip. Not not filled with drudgery like the last two days. Walk and talk, hell yeah. <laughs> God damn it, I finished the challenge. So usually if I don't go for a walk, I get less than 3,000 steps a day. 
I'll show you as proof whether I actually walked 20,000 steps every day for seven days or not. Day one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Bam, 25,000 steps today. I did 500 more than my target and it was the easiest one because of Gabby. So thank you Gabby for that. And to those of you real skeptics who think, oh, maybe he just jacked off his phone for a long time or jacked off his watch for a long time. Let me tell you, it is not worth jacking off <laughs> your phone or watch for three hours. So that is out of the question, man. I really did walk that many steps. 20,000 steps a day for seven days was too much for me. I am never doing this challenge again, <laughs> that's for sure. I will share my thoughts tomorrow since I am tired today. It's actually been four days since my challenge ended and I did not go for walks during those four days, including today, because it is 30 degrees Celsius right now. There's a heat wave in Toronto. That's 86 degrees Fahrenheit. It is miserable to walk in this hot, sweaty heat because I find it so energy sapping. But let's cut to the chase. Did walking solve all my problems? No. Some of them? Yes, but not all. I had mixed results. Did it get me out of a rut? Did it uplift my mood? Not with 20,000 steps a day. I was sapped of energy afterwards. But if you walk less than 20,000 steps a day, about 20 minutes to an hour of walking, I find that that did get me out of a rut last year in 2023 when I started walking daily with my grandmother when she came over in the summer. In July, we started going for walks almost every day for just over an hour, about 8,000 steps. Even after she left a couple months later at the end of August, I continued walking almost every day even when it got really cold, I just put a mask on and put my mittens on and wear a warm parka and I would walk almost every day. And I would say that really did get me out of a long rut that I was in. Getting out of the house and walking, whether I was listening to something or not, it made me feel like I was on the right track, that this was turning my life around one step at a time, one day at a time, that I was indeed getting 1% better every day just by going on these hour long walks. And in February of this year, 2024, I joined the gym and stopped going on walks as frequently. But when I do go for a walk, even if I went to the gym earlier in the day, I find that the walk adds more to my life that the gym hasn't. And there are studies done about walking that are talked about in this book, The Comfort Crisis. A 20 minute stroll through a city park can cause profound changes in the neurological structure of our brains. This leaves us feeling calmer and with sharper and more productive creative minds. But we found that people who use their cell phone on the walk saw none of those benefits. A walk in the woods only becomes mind medicine so long as the phone is away and also not beaming information into our ears. Now having gone on walks with and without earbuds for hours on end, I would say that even when I was listening to a podcast or an audiobook or a lecture, it was still making profound changes in my mood and attitude towards life. And if you want the minimal amount of walk that is the most efficient, your biggest bang for buck, there's a little magic in 20 minutes. The University of Michigan discovered that 20 minutes outside three times a week is the dose of nature that most efficiently drop people's levels of stress hormone cortisol. So you don't have to walk for an hour every day, even 20 minutes a day, three days in a week can be brain changing and life changing. So if you're in a rut and you wanna uplift your mood, I highly recommend walking, just not 20,000 steps, two to three hours. 20 minutes to an hour is plenty enough. Having said that, the next question, if you're uninspired and you're out of ideas, did it help me with those? As I said earlier, no, I couldn't come up with a single idea to talk about in my next video during my walks, whether I was not listening to anything or I was listening to a lecture or a podcast and learning something new, I didn't get any benefit in terms of idea generation or problem solving like, ideas to how to make this video the best possible video. It didn't really help on that front either. Some of you might be curious, did I lose any weight over these seven days? And if you have a look at this graph, it was pretty much the same. I mean, this big dip that you see is because I didn't eat much that day. I didn't have any dinner and I didn't have a huge lunch either. So that's why there was a big dip in one day. But as you can see, the next day I ate a fair bit and I gained some weight back. Seven days is too little a time to tell whether it really helps with weight loss, but I'm sure it has a positive effect in the long run if you keep it up. But that's if you're going to walk 20,000 steps every day. So the short answer is no, it doesn't make a huge difference in weight. How much you eat every day matters way more. 
far. So the final conclusion I have is that walking is great. It solves some problems, some important problems, like getting out of a rut, having a better mood and outlook towards life, but it's not a solution to everything like problem solving and brainstorming. And the last question is, has this challenge changed my walking habits? Am I gonna walk long after this challenge is over? Well, I'm still gonna prioritize the gym over walking. So if I have to choose between the two, I will choose the gym. But I do want to incorporate a short walk after eating, so long as the weather is not sticky hot. If you like this seven day challenge video, you might like the previous video that I made where I quit all social media for seven days, including YouTube. Check it out. Until next time, 1% better every day, baby.